Yes, the doctor is in, and today we are examining Naples, Florida. That's right, we are checking the pulse to tell you where the hottest places to make your offer is to find a deal in this beautiful area of luxurious golf courses, white sandy beaches. Naples, Florida is one of the most peculiar marketplaces in the entire state of Florida. It's on the southeast. It is amazing in that it's super popular. It's a great retirement spot. I'll give you some overview of this marketplace and we're going to deep dive into the data. So if you're considering buying here, if you presently own here, if you are looking about predictions of how this market's trending in 2024, all those questions, my friend, will be answered as we examine this beautiful marketplace. Now, as a reminder, there's several marketplaces that I've updated recently. You can find links to those videos in the description below this video. We have some amazing content on deck I wanna tell you about, and then I'm gonna dive into Naples. There's a lot happening on the insurance front in Florida, and it's not being reported. This is obviously a very important topic. I'm covering it here in a few days. There's also some major reforms affecting buyers and sellers gonna save them, in my opinion, literally thousands of dollars over the next decade. We're gonna talk about how the industry is changing for really the first time in 100 years and how it affects you when you go to deal with a real estate agent here in the future. But as you know, day to day, the doctor is in, checking the pulse of the top marketplaces all around the country so that you have the insight you need to make great investment decisions as you make your plans in the world of real estate. So without further ado, let's get into the data. Upfront folks, let me tell you some characteristics of this marketplace as you start to see some of the most important graphs that I like to re review when looking at any marketplace. Now, Naples, Florida is interesting in that the last time I checked, it has one of the oldest ages of population. I think it was the number one age population in the state of Florida. It's actually up there with like the villages and it also has a higher affluent population. So last I remember checking, I believe Naples had the highest average annual income of any area in Florida, well over the state average. I believe, and I'm working from memory, it was over $70,000 annual for an average income in the county, in the market area of Naples. Now, as we look at the first graph, we're looking at buy versus rent average. As you can see, we see very weird anomalies in the Naples market going back several years. So folks, you see the red line. This is actually cost to own a home. Okay. Now cost to own a home is very high in Naples considering what most of the markets in the state of Florida cost. And I, yes, I know everybody's like, yeah, everything in Florida is expensive. $3,582 is up there. It's like Miami up there. Okay. Now look at the rent value. It's down to $2,980. Obviously there's a considerable savings of 20% and it's likely higher now, folks. This graph is now much higher to buy. So the buy side graph, if you were to play this out into today's cost, it's going to be higher. Now this is a summer graph. So this is recent. The most recent data I have, um, we're factoring in the Census Bureau of what people make. We're looking at basically the cost versus rent. Now look at the history. This is constantly inverted in Naples where here's what I'm saying, folks. Historically, rents all across Florida. I look at market after market. Now, I'm looking at this live with you, okay? I didn't look at these graphs ahead of time. But if you look here, historically, going back to 2015, I would tell you every other market in Florida I look at, rent is always outpacing the cost of home ownership, which is what drives home ownership forward. But what's happened here is we've had several years, except for a lapse from the COVID pandemic, that looks like rents actually outpaced the cost of ownership for only a brief period of time. And then we ha now have the gap even widening. So that's a trend to watch. It's obviously going to really kind of deter people from buying because affordability, particularly to buy his distancing itself from renting, not going to stop everybody, but people are going to make their decisions as they want. Obviously there's a pretty decent discount, which is, I would believe widened even more to the degree of probably 25, 26% cheaper to rent than to try and purchase a home right now. Now here's what's called home buyer zip code score. So folks, as you can see right here, these zip codes at the top of the list, which I don't even know, you may not even wanna live in some of these zip codes like Amakali, that's probably like a rural. But like but what we're looking at here is a blended score based on how long it takes to sell a house, how much inventory is hitting the market in this given zip code, and how many price cuts are taking place. The zip codes at the top of the list, present a better opportunity to try to make a deal, but 
over an abundance. Look at this, two thirds of the real estate markets in the Naples area are actually really negative, meaning they're very hot, very tight, and it might be tough for you to find a value. Now, let's take a look at Naples as a snapshot, okay? It's not a huge market, so it's easy for us to view. Now, this is what we call the Naples MSA. You guys all know I like to look at what's called MSAs. It's a government acronym for Metropolitan Statistical Area. So we're looking at Marco Island, we're looking at Naples, we're looking at Mockley, we're looking at all these areas that fall underneath that guidance. Now, this data right here is going to be, I'm gonna show you four specific points that average all of the entire MSA really quick. Now, first one's inventory year over year. Look what's going on here. It plummeted in the pandemic. It rose last year, staggered, and rose some more. Now, you can see the historical running average of this market is somewhere up here, okay? There's typically around 5,000 homes for sale for buyers to absorb, but right now, sellers are not interested in bringing their homes to the market. It's a very low count. So it'll be interesting, right? We have historically low numbers. So is that threatening down market time? Is that causing people to make it really easy to sell their house? I mean, obviously we just saw a home buyer chart that says it's really seller favored in a lot of the markets, but let's take a look. Here's the price cut percentages. So right now only 0.16 or basically 16% of all the properties in the marketplace in this area are actually price reducing in order to sell. So it looked like it spiked, okay, this was in March. You know, the fall of last year drove some price reductions where it was almost one in four of all homes were putting a price reduction to get out. But since that happened, it's absolutely starting to plummet. The next graph I wanna look at is a recession dashboard, okay? So in all marketplaces in the country, you have what's called recessionary unemployment rate, which it runs an average. So we know whenever people start to lose their jobs in a given area, we know what the historical recession marker will be. So in this area, typical recession driven by unemployment reaches about 8.5%, okay? So that's what this market is capable of on the high side, okay? On the average, okay, so if you were to take and blend this chart out, going all the way back to 1988, this is a long running amount of data, 5.76% is the average unemployment, okay? So as you can see, we are way below that. In fact, back in September of last year, Naples went to 2.2%, which is ridiculously hot job market, okay? I think the lowest the entire state got was 2.6%. Now, it is actually coming off of that floor. So since September of last year, you're noticing it's climbing up, up, up. It went to 2.8, and right now it hovers right about 2.8, which is, by the way, the state of Florida average. So Naples over-indexed Florida on how hot the job market gets, folks. Now listen, if you look at home prices in Naples, okay? Did I actually, listen, if you look at home prices in Naples, look at this. I haven't looked at this yet, but look, look what happened last year. Going at the end of 2022, we had the marketplace fall off a little bit later. Let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about against that unemployment graph. Last year in April, Naples started to cool off a little bit earlier than the rest of Florida. So most of Florida started to dip further on. It was almost like summer whenever the Florida market started to take a dump. April was the time frame for Naples to actually see buyers really kind of disappear from the market, but then it started to bounce back a little faster. So what's interesting is Naples was gaining ground all the way into the summer of 2023, going back to last August. If you look at Florida, the rest of Florida was like this going to the end of the year. So Naples was climbing when Florida was going down. Now, I don't know the driver of that. You folks live in Naples, you know what happened. Maybe an Amazon factory opened, maybe a military base opened. I'm being sarcastic, but something happened that, that created a whole lot of opportunity for people to come in and pay for houses. And that has to do with the low unemployment rate, okay? So when this is ticking down, at the same time, when it goes super low, like record low, there's no 2.2 in the history of ever in this graph. This right here in September of last year represented the hottest unemployment report ever reported that we have data for from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, okay? That matters, folks. When your unemployment is this tight, you know what employers are doing? I need someone to run my Burger King drive-thru. I gotta pay them $22 an hour. That's what happens. 
because nobody comes to the work. Nobody responds to the job ads. Nobody comes to, to be hired. Nobody responds to the job ads. Employers have to pay a lot more in this kind of economic climate. That's why these kinds of overcorrections are dangerous. Everybody looks at the possibility of a crash in the housing market and they tie it purely to the idea of 2008, which was only this myopic focus of foreclosures. Well, folks, guess what? Guess what causes foreclosures? <laughs> Unemployment rates climbing. This is a peek into what's coming this weekend, but there's now a trend in Florida. This, my friends, is why I think Florida came out of the tank this January, early this year. You guys have heard me report on this in the channel before. I said last fall, when Jerome Powell started a move on the interest rates, last fall, interest rates went from like 4% when he started on housing for a 30 year fixed mortgage. It went all the way to 7.3% and it completely decimated the housing market in its pace. Okay. And over the fall season, Florida went down 13% over five short months. Nobody pays attention to that, but it happened. The reason I think that we pulled out of that in January was number one, interest rates softened a little bit because the bond market gave them reprieve. The bond market was not trading in the mindset that, that you know interest rates are gonna be going up and up and up and that Powell would keep pushing. The bottom line is the bond market was doing things to create interest rates that weren't really naturally as low as they should be. The bond market has now caught up with time. They said, oh no, this is a problem. Powell is not going to go back to 0% interest rates and rates are now going record high. They went past what they went last fall. But at the same time, listen folks, when rates went high last fall and it, and it shook the market, look what was going on in employment. June, July, August was 2.7. October was 2.7. December was 2.7. Look what happened in January. It got even lower. People made even more money. People got even more jobs. But look what's happening now. It came off the floor in July. No longer 2.6. It's gone 2.7. It rode there and now it's going to 2.8. So we now have the highest rate of unemployment in Florida in the entire year. It just was just reported. Now look, folks, unemployment is not like a stock ticker. It doesn't bounce around. It makes a move and it keeps moving. It drops down and it drops. You know, it goes up and it goes up. You don't see the data of unemployment going like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up between these long, these gray areas are recession. Look, they make solid moves, folks. I expect this makes a solid move and goes towards recession. Now, Naples is interesting because it is a very, very overheated market, okay? Let me show you what I mean. This, my friends, is not good. Okay, this market runs super expensive. Now, I will grant everybody that lives in Naples, don't panic because you already heard from me that you're very affluent. Okay, you have a lot of revenue and cash and savings. And so the likelihood of you going into trouble is very low. The uh, percentage of mortgages you actually hold on your properties is probably the lowest in the state or arguably one of the lowest. But you aren't going to have people to do your dishes and wash your tables and unless your prices take a break because the people that actually live there and do trade work, and I'm not just talking about dishwashers and entry-level work. I'm talking about like your plumbers, your electricians, your, um, your skilled trades that are actually making a decent wage. The UPS driver at $35 an hour, whatever they make now. Look at this. 11.8 times earnings, folks. For you to own a house in Naples, you will make, you'll pay $600,000 for it against a $50,000 a year average annual earnings in this MSA, okay? That is insane, right? $50,000 a year, what is that, okay? That's a person that um, works as an admin, makes $40,000 a year, and then they have a side hustle like Uber driving all weekend in their off hours to make fifteen grand more. That's what that is. Okay, that's not even a first, second year nurse can afford a house there. Your nurses are renting houses. That's why it's just untenable. Now, this is important, 11.8. 11 11 .8. I mean, again, everybody loves to go in the comments and say, Jared, how come uh, you always talk about interest rates? It used to be 18%. It used to be 14% in 1982. Yeah, but you paid 2X, 3X what your annual earnings were to buy a house. You are financing two times an annual salary, three times an annual salary at most. Now you're financing 11 in debt. 
against a massively high interest rate, folks. That is a big run up. Look, at the very least, there's a 7.8% running line here. Look where it overcorrects, by the way. The last market shift, Naples overcorrected, right? You, you overheat your unemployment and then you cool it the other direction in a recession. You have the market go from 11, look what it topped out last time. It's higher than the last market cycle. It dropped from 11 to five point. So let's say it goes from 11 to five or 6.2. I mean, you're talking, you know, probably 35% shift in house prices. I don't even know what it is, but 26% decline is needed just to get it from 11.8 to 7.8. And we all know if we go to recession, it doesn't stop at 7.8, it over corrects the other direction. No different than all the other factors that create housing. Let's take a look at this. The first chart I actually have set is poverty rate. Again, just showing you the illustration of the affluence in this area, 10.7% well below the state average. Let's Let's take a further illustrate what I'm talking about. Take a look at this. This is poverty rate in the area. So Naples, Marco Islands, 9.8%. You can see Miami is running more on the state average at 12 and a half. You go up this coastline, pretty low poverty here, folks. 10.7 under index, Punta Gorda, 8.2, Sarasota, 8.6. Incredible. Let's take a look at where the danger is. Let's flip the zip code. And I'm going to show you guys some things to watch for. And where is the poverty impacting, right? The rural areas, 25%. A lot of trade workers are probably just like, I'm going out here. I don't even know. Maybe this is dangerous. I don't even know what this is. looks like it's against wildlife and government owned land, but you move in towards here. You have, you know, this three, four, one Oh four is 14 half percent. Still not extreme. I mean, everything through this market is pretty solid. Nothing crazy. I see a little area down here. 34140 showing 35%. I don't even know how you get that close to water and run that kind of number, but it happens uh, all over the state of Florida. All right, folks, let's talk about home value growth in this area year over year. We're simply looking at how housing areas have performed in the marketplace. Notice what you're seeing here. Okay. I love that I started on the poverty graph because look at this supposed impoverished area. 25% it's gone up 4.6. Why? Because this is the only place people can afford. It was $350,000 average in a marketplace that's like 600,000. It's half. It's half the price of the running average to buy a home anywhere else. So this is happening, by the way, all over the state of Florida, folks. You have all these areas where it's cheapest and all the areas where it's more expensive is more balanced. It's 1% up or it's down 0.3 or it's down, oof, down five. Uh, there's your biggest loser, folks. 34108. Oh, no, I'm wrong. 34103, 6.8%, and then even worse. 34102, 8%. Big fluctuations, right? Look at the hyper luxury market here versus, woof, about the same. This was running hotter. So this is 1.4 last year. It's now down to 1.295. You had 1.295 down to 1206. And then you have 1255 down to 1.184. So, wow, luxury market taking a hit lower end range. Look at this. This one's below the average, right? Hot 6.1%. Folks, by the way, this is amazing productivity. These areas right here. Now, mind you, people that live in all these areas of Naples probably would not want to live in these areas right here, which it's just hard to see this folks. This is basically people just hanging on, getting whatever they can afford in this area area. Marco Island, Marco, 4.6% down. So luxury market getting a little soft. We're going to look at more statistics to give you an idea of what happened there. Let's look at the crash percentages in the last market. This is the values from 2007 to 2012, simply in a nutshell. Um, you've got negative 54% here, negative 58% here, uh, 44%, negative 38%. You can see which areas suffered the most. And again, History is sometimes an indicator of the future, so it doesn't hurt to kind of see what is going on. Let's look at those luxury markets one more time. Look at, look at how much. They seemingly didn't change too much over the last market, but you had big number changes. Look at this, this $800,000 price in 2007 went to $500,000. I sure that was felt. 728,000 went down to 438,000. It's easy for these small numbers to really cascade. Look at this. So the un more unappealing areas, no offense to people that live here, 286,000 down to 130. 
like lost half your value, thousand down to one fifty two, well over half value. Uh, so interesting stuff. We'll have to see if those hold for the future. Now for sale inventory year over year, I'm gonna move pretty fast. We don't need to take too much longer with this update, but look at this. Immokalee starting to pile up, 77% up. Inventory down. Inventory flat on 34119, down 4116, flat 4104. So you have all of these, which I expect to go up. Like luxury markets, they're primed to start to see an in increase. And you gotta understand folks, these are probably dramatically higher than the two years back. So let's hover over one of these, for instance, right? Let's go over this one. So 34108 is now at 277 units. Last year, actively on the market was 167. And if I were looking back two years, I bet you it was like 80 the year before that. So we're probably triple in inventory what it was two years ago. So even though these numbers don't look huge, because last year, when we were doing these kinds of updates in the fall in Naples and some of the other markets on the East Coast, some of these other markets on the West Coast, there uh, were 100% increases, 150% increases. And you're just obviously not seeing those right now. Price cuts, where are the motivated sellers, folks? Not very much. Remember, we saw the update earlier. I showed you the entire market. It was averaging like 16%, which is way low. So people aren't getting very antsy, but the ones that are, are right here, okay? 34116, one out of four listings reducing price, okay? Not a huge marketplace, it looks. There's only like 60 home, 80 homes there, but a lot of them are starting to reduce. They're starting to reduce in these areas. These are the people that are getting a little more antsy. These people probably have um, cash. They're probably very patient. Luxury is not reducing. Luxury has no idea what to reduce to. And I've got to tell you folks, your sale year to year is showing you're down five, 6%. So if you want to get really accurate on your price and not be on the market for very long, that gives you an idea, like what was my area selling for last year, okay? Let's look on days on market. Is it getting worse versus last year? This is year over year. It's 34% longer to sell a home in Immokalee. So even though this area is booming, it is getting slower. So if you've been looking to buy out here, you might see things ease up quite a bit. It is going to be top of the market though. You're paying the, the highest price probably historically that's ever been paid in this area. Same could be said for a lot of areas, but again, we saw what happened over the crash trend. I'm not trying to scare people. Just do not make yourself house poor if you are going to buy in these affordable areas and you're most likely in the in the more and you're most likely in the crowd likely to be more impoverished. This is a PSA. I'm trying to help you folks out. Look at this. Days on market's growing. 25% here, only 9% here, 20% here. You're going to see there's probably going to be some impatience here when people can't sell in 3 months. They'll just take their house off the market. So these people that are high in cash, they don't really care. They think, oh, Mark will be better next year. Um, they won't want to take the five, six, seven, eight percent haircut, perceived haircut. It's not a haircut, it's just the fact the market is shifting a little bit, and they will just pull their house off the market, which will keep homes from looking aged here. We all know how this goes. The luxury sellers, they they get frustrated with people coming in and out of their house. They go, man, this is annoying. It's taking a long time. I'm not in a big deal rush, anyways. Don't really know if I'm gonna move to Dubai or California. Blah, 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 blah. All right, sale inventory. Here we go. This is the change month over month, okay? So this is real time. This is showing us what has changed from this month to the last, okay? So Immokalee growing big, okay? It is absolutely stunned silence in Immokalee. And this is why. These folks are on a razor's edge of qualifying because this is a lower end area. And so when interest rates bump, all of a sudden all these buyers can't qualify. So you folks in Immokalee are going to have to probably get price aggressive in some instances to get the heck out of there. So you have another shift here, 13%, 34114. So you've been wanting to buy there. You are going to see more. Marco Island not doing too much. These areas coming up a little, but nothing extravagantly high. Okay. 34102 came up by almost 10%. If you're looking on the water luxury side, it looks like this area is starting to see a shift in its inventory. I think this was also the most expensive of these three zip codes. That's today's update, folks. Thanks so much for watching the channel. If you are looking to buy or sell anywhere in the US, particularly the state of Florida, my team can help you. We will help you with a data-driven approach to buy or sell. Make sure you do it smart. Hit me up at info at jaredjones.com. That's I-N-F-O at jaredjones.com. If you're an agent and you want to be consulted weekly, join my team Info at jaredjones.com, 20-year broker with over 3,000 sales to help you in your future journey as we see the major changes coming in this marketplace. But that's it for now. If you are this far into the video, drop me a comment below, hit the thumbs up button, and again, join the doctor on future updates by subscribing to the channel. We'll see you on the next one.